How'd you break it? Take a seat. You're gonna be tired of standing up. All right, let's start. Um, this topic is something that I hold dear to my heart. Um, it's something that I've learned recently, and the topic is forgiveness. And we're gonna have a discussion at the end, and Caleb is gonna be the one leading the discussion at the end the discussion questions so our focus uh passage is going to be matthew 6 14 through 15 uh before we start reading let's let's pray thank you lord for this day and thank you for another day of life you've given us and thank you for blessing us to be here and help me calm my nerves down and just to speak your word out lord and thank you again for blessing me to do this and i pray this in your son's name amen so we're going to start off by reading Matthew 6, 14 and 15. So it says, If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Forgiveness. True forgiveness is something hard to do, and I completely understand that myself. These past couple of weeks, I have been working through truly forgiving my older brother and this broken relationship that we have. Working through this has brought to light many things in my life on other relationships I have either ruined, broken, or took it for granted because of this grudge I held against him in my heart for many years. So let's say, how much do you think this water bottle weighs? Just take random guess. Two ounces. What? Two dollars. No, how much does it weigh? Weigh, weigh. Quarter pound. Quarter pound. Pound and a half. Pound and a half. One more, huh? Twenty ounces. Twenty ounces. Well. In my point of view, it really just depends on how long I hold on to this. Um, let's, um, at this very moment, it's really light. And, but the longer I hold on to it, the more heavier it gets. And the, war, and the more it wears me down. It's the same thing with a grudge. It may seem like nothing now. But you continue. But the more you continue to hold on to it, the more it grows heavier in our hearts. Releasing the grudge I had with my brother brought out an emotional side of me that I have honestly neglected and forgot about for such a long time. But by the strength of God, I was finally able to forgive him, and it brought me great peace and abundance of joy. It is hard to forgive because our minds, in our minds, we might say. How can I, or why should I forgive this person who has committed this great sin against me? I struggle with this as well, but let's think about it this way. How can we receive forgiveness from one if we are so unwilling to forgive another? Forgiveness is a two-way road. And to help comprehend this, we're gonna read Matthew 18, 21 through 35. And I'm gonna need two volunteers if you wanna read half and half. I'm not too good of a reader, so. It's a pretty famous parable that Jesus gave. Yeah.
So the server of the gun is ignoring the applications of the and I will pity you every And I will pity for him to master that sort of early sin and get to death. But when that same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had a man thrown into prison until he could pay back the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. When the master called the servant in, or then the master called the servant in, you wicked servant, he said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. As we can see in the passage, we are unable to buy our own way into heaven. We cannot afford that great debt as it states in verse 25. Yet in verse 27, he still forgives us, our, although that amount is crazy. To better get this parable, I want to give you the worth of how much it is each in today's money. Um, so 100 denarii is around $5,800 in today's money, which is a significant amount. But 10,000 talents is $3.48 billion. What did this guy need that he owed so much money? To make this even more understandable, the average person back then made about $58 a day. How could someone who makes $58 a day pay back $3.48 billion? They just simply can't. It's not possible. So think about it also in this way. How can we ever receive grace, forgiveness, and love from God if he hadn't forgiven us? Since he forgave us, why can't we forgive our neighbor? Someone, I need someone to read Hebrews 12, 15. Someone be so nice to do that. I need you guys to close your eyes real quick and I want you to picture this beautiful garden that you've always dreamed of having with the most beautiful flowers or whatever you would like in that garden and in the midst of this garden you find a weed naturally you would want to pull out the weed but let's say you don't by not pulling out the weed, you have allowed the weed to grow its roots deeper into that beautiful garden you have harvest. You can open them now. <laughs> Let's say one person has sinned against you, but you've chose not to forgive them. You're allowing that root of bitterness, pointing back at the passage, to grow and to harvest deep into your heart affecting those relationships with others. You have allowed that grudge or that sin that you hold against them to kill off all those other beautiful plants you have planted and that you've taken care of. Hanging on to that grudge does not bring justice or serve that revenge you may seek, but it kills those joyous parts in our lives. Forgiving the person doesn't mean whatever they did was fine no that is not what i'm saying at all but whatever but rather it relieves us from that root of bitterness the people who suffer the most from not forgiving is ourselves now looking back at the first passage we read at matthew 6 we forgive because we have been forgiven without deserving forgiveness in any way to reflect the image of god as we try to imitate jesus we should forgive willingly 
even if the person doesn't deserve it. Now, forgiving, forgiving isn't something that always happens immediately, but it's a process and it's a daily choice that we do. To truly forgive, we must turn to God and ask him, Father, help me forgive this person as you've forgiven me. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you're weak, but it shows that you have strength. You are willingly letting go of hurt and trauma to have your heart focused on Christ. Now, I'm moving forward. I'm gonna need three more people to read. Um, one, two, three. Uh, Philippians 4, 8, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, and Romans 5, three to four. And in each of these, I'm going to bring out uh, a point. So point number one is being focused on what's good. And, yeah. Four, eight. A lot of the time, we are in the, while we're in the process of forgiving, we think on the negative and the experience that's relation with this, which I understand, but we need to see the good in our lives and the good that can come out of this situation. Ask God, ask God's people to pray for you and to allow God to remove all these negative thoughts and to be filled with good ones. Battle all the negative thinking by reflecting and thanking God for all the blessings He has given you. Point number two, looking forward. It's Isaiah. Focus on what God is doing now in your life and not what had happened. Yes, I know it's easier said than done. I totally understand. But let's be a part of the amazing things he is doing and that he has in store for us. Our past is in the past. What happened will always be there. We can't change that. We can look forward and have Christ centered in our lives and that brings us peace. Point number three, rejoicing. And that's the Romans. Rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Let us rejoice. We have been given this wonderful opportunity to learn with God through the Holy Spirit. We can use this time of healing and forgiving to grow closer to Him and to be able to learn from our all knowing God. We shall rejoice because we, because Learning to forgive and grow from that pain with him only lets us come out wiser. Thank you guys for being here. And yeah. If you want to...